We have been bringing you results from our latest Bear Facts KSAT Rivard Report poll. When asked about the severity of specific issues plaguing our area, people ranked both child abuse and domestic violence in the top five. Last year, I brought you a story about Bear County's first ever court ordered collaborative commission on domestic violence. After the release of these poll results, I reached back out to several commission leaders to see what gaps they found and what progress they've made. Actions are preceded by attitudes. It all begins with an acknowledgement that we have a problem. Family Violence Prevention Services CEO Marta Palaya is encouraged by the fact that our community is admitting child abuse and domestic violence are rampant. That realization led to our region's first ever formal county city collaborative commission on domestic violence formed about a year ago. We have the leaders of every organization that is addressing the issue of domestic violence sitting at a table having this conversation together. One of the commission's leaders, Judge Monique Diaz, says there are now eight committees setting goals and meeting monthly. The judiciary, law enforcement, prosecution, nonprofit, health care, data, education, and faith-based. Every committee identifies gaps and sets strategies to fill them. Diaz lists a few already under the microscope. The issue of the surrender of firearms that are in the possession of individuals who are court ordered to not possess them, subject to protective orders or mental health orders. We are proud to announce that we've actually already attained funding to develop a domestic violence high risk team that is being housed at the Bear County Family Justice Center. That team will flag the high risk cases that could end in death and offer wraparound services to that victim. In the nonprofit committee, uh, we're looking at um, bringing in pro bono legal services. We're looking at providing domestic violence programming in the schools for elementary levels. The commission also setting new goals amid the COVID-19 pandemic. For example, using the COVID-19 hotline to offer resources. We review with every caller the opportunities to get help around domestic violence and child abuse. Not necessarily because that caller might be the person who needs those services, but we're asking them to check on family and friends. Jenny Hickson with Metro Health's domestic violence team has helped create flyers for school districts and the food bank to include when distributing food boxes. Domestic violence resources, but also parenting tips. We know that times of economic stress, when things like this are going on, that makes it harder for sometimes parenting relationships to go well if they're already a little rocky. High stress while stuck at home together can be a recipe for domestic violence, keeping advocates and experts busier than ever. Now, this story is part of my series confronting domestic violence called Loving and Fear. If you can find more of those stories, you want to see them along with domestic violence resources. We have all of that at ksat.com slash domestic violence.